This lecture is about specific heat and how to use the concept in equations. Specific heat is a measurement of how many joules of heat are required to change the temperature of one kilogram of mass by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. Remember that those changes are the same. So the equation for specific heat is the heat required to change the temperature divided by the mass of the material multiplied by the change in temperature in degrees Celsius or Kelvin. This equation on its own can be a little confusing, so I'm going to give you some intuitions with some animations on the bottom in just a minute. Just be aware that this equation is more often written as the much more well-known Q equals MC delta T. I've written that on the top right, but that equation really just comes from the definition for specific heat. So again, a material-specific heat tells you how many joules are required to change the temperature of one kilogram of that material by one degree Celsius. So as an example, we can pretend that this blue material in the bottom center has a specific heat of 50 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. This means that for every one degree Celsius that we want to change, we have to add or subtract 50 joules of energy per kilogram of the material present. So I'm going to give you this visual in the bottom center showing you what's happening as we change the heat, and I'm also going to have this equation written out on the bottom right showing you how the math of what's happening fits together in that equation. So a specific heat of 50 joules literally means that if we add 50 joules of energy to one kilogram of the material, that's going to result in a temperature change of one degree. So if it requires 50 joules to change the temperature by one degree for every one kilogram that we have, and we only have one kilogram, if we add 100 joules, that's twice the amount needed to change the temperature by one degree Celsius. So that means 100 joules would change the temperature by two degrees Celsius. And you can see that that math works out on the right. If I were to add 200 joules to just one kilogram of this material, that's four times the heat required to change the temperature by one degree. So that means that 200 joules would change the temperature by four degrees. Let's say that we had more of this material. Suddenly we have two kilograms. The specific heat says that 50 joules are required to change the temperature of one kilogram by one degree. So now we're trying to change the temperature of twice that mass. So if 50 joules is enough to change one kilogram by one degree, it's only gonna be enough to change two kilograms by one half of a degree. We now have twice as much mass to change, so that energy is kind of evenly distributed to both. So each individual one kilogram only gets 25 joules, which is only enough to change the temperature by one half of a degree. So because this is 50 joules per kilogram degree Celsius, if we wanna change two kilograms by one degree, and this material requires 50 joules per kilogram to change its temperature by one degree, if we have two kilograms, we need 100 joules just to change its temperature by one degree Celsius. So in general, because the specific heat is 50 joules per kilogram degree Celsius, and we have two kilograms, it requires 100 joules to change this material by one degree Celsius, so if we were to add, say, 300 joules to the material, that would only change the temperature by 3 degrees Celsius. This equation is pretty easy to use. I'm just going to do some example problems. Water has a specific heat of 4,186 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. If you're trying to heat 10 kilograms of water by 8 degrees Celsius, how much energy do you need to add to the water? So as usual, I'll just write down what I know. I know the specific heat the mass and the change in temperature. So just plugging that into the equation gets me 334,880 joules. That seems like a lot, but we're going to be dealing with very high amounts of energy in this unit in general. It takes a lot of energy to change the temperature of even simple materials by just a little bit. In example number two, we're using water again, but this time we're taking away 200,000 joules from four kilograms of water, and we want to know how much the temperature will change by. Because we're taking heat energy out, this is going to cool the water. It's going to decrease the temperature. So just writing out what I know, I know the specific heat, I know the mass, and I know the change in energy. That's negative 200,000 joules. 
So solving for the change in temperature, I can just plug this into Q equals MC delta T. And solving for the temperature on its own gets me a final answer of negative 11.9 degrees Celsius. In problem three, again, we're using water. What is the mass of water that would gain 30 degrees Celsius if you added 10,000 joules of internal energy? So remember, internal energy is the same thing as thermal energy, and adding that is the same thing as heat. It's the change in thermal energy. So again, I'll just write down what I know. And we're trying to solve for mass, plugging that into the equation and isolating mass gets me a final answer of 0 0.08 kilograms. Finally, in example problem four, 30 degrees of iron is heated by three Kelvin when 40,500 joules of energy is added to it. What is the specific heat of iron? So I have the mass, I have the change in temperature, and remember this equation works whether we're using Kelvin or Celsius because the changes in temperature are the same on both scales. And the energy is 40,500, that's the heat added. And we're trying to find the specific heat. So again, I'm just using Q equals MC delta T. Plugging in my numbers and isolating C gets me a final answer of 450 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Just a quick note, the specific heat equation only applies when the material is changing temperature. There are specific temperatures where the material changes its state, like when it changes from a solid to a liquid when it's melting. And when this happens, energy goes into changing the state or the phase of the material instead of the temperature. This means that we cannot use Q equals MC delta T by itself when a material crosses a temperature that causes it to change its state. That's going to be the theme of the next few videos, but for now you just need to remember that you can only use this equation when the material is changing its temperature, when it's changing its state, when it's melting or freezing or evaporating or condensing, we're going to use a different equation that we'll learn about in the next few videos.